Hey guys, it's Tori and today I'm going to be discussing my top 10 favorite classics of all time. So almost exactly a year ago, I did a video on my top five favorite classics of all time and at that point I hadn't read very many classics so I didn't have a lot of options to put in that video. But I really wanted to make it at the time so I came up with five and talked about them. Still really enjoyed them, they weren't like ones that I pretended to enjoy that I didn't. I really liked them but I just didn't, again, I didn't have a lot of options to choose from. And so I wasn't necessarily as passionate about some of those as I am about other books that I've read more recently and so I decided to put that video make that video private just because first of all like I mentioned didn't have a ton of options so it's not very representative of who I am as a reader and second of all I didn't feel like I articulated myself very well in that video so we're making a new one this year with top 10 instead of top 5 because I feel like I can do that at this point so let's just get right into them I'm going to start from least favorite and go to favorite again these are my top 10 so all of them I love keep that in mind I just have them ranked according to which ones I like maybe a little bit more and a little bit less so my 10th favorite classic of all time is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte this may come as quite a shock to some people who saw my most disappointing reads of 2019 because this was on that list the reason being was at the time I just I expected it to be a solid five star read but there was a portion of it that really I struggled with and I just didn't like as much and so I ended up being like a 4.5 star so I just didn't love it as much as I hoped I would I thought it would be like a top five and it's a top ten which again is not that bad but I expected more from it if that makes sense but I still really, really love this story. If you don't know, this begins with following Mr. Lockwood who has recently moved into this new house and the landlord is this mysterious man named Mr. Heathcliff. And while Lockwood's there, he ends up hearing the story of Heathcliff's past, of his past experience of abuse as a child, mistreatment as a child, and how that led him to seek vengeance as he got older and it's a wonderful 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 book very atmospheric emily bronte primarily wrote poetry so her writing is just beautiful to read and i just really love this book i love reading about heathcliff i find him a fascinating character he's like professor snape like if you enjoy professor snape and just his nuances as a character his you know he's not all bad he's kind of more of an anti-hero that's very much what heathcliff is like and in fact their stories have some similarities to them which is very interesting sometimes i wonder if jk rowling was inspired for snape by Heathcliff and Wuthering Heights. I'm not sure, but they're very, very similar characters. And yeah, I just love it. I will say the only portion I don't love is the portion that's focused more specifically on Linton and Kathy. I'm not going to go into detail on who they are, but there are two characters that I don't really care for and I don't really like them, but it's also like, like with Heathcliff, I don't like him at all as a person, but I, as a character, I, I found him fascinating. Whereas Linton and Kathy, I felt like, not Catherine the older, but Kathy the younger. Both of those characters I found I just didn't like and it wasn't like I was fascinated by them either. I just genuinely did not like them. I will say I love Hareton though. He's one of my favorite characters in this if you've read it. I just love him and my heart goes to him so hard. But I just, yeah, I love the atmosphere and I love the characters in this. This is the one, because it's in the 10th spot, it's the most likely to get pushed off eventually. But I still really, really enjoy this book a lot. Next we have a book I haven't really, or technically a play, that I haven't really talked about much on my channel. And it's just because I haven't really had much opportunity, but it's one I really, really love. It's actually a classic play, um, I believe it's Roman question mark I apologize it might be Greek it's Greek it's Greek so anyway that play is Medea by Euripides this is technically a copy of 10 of his plays combined but I read Medea a couple semesters ago for a college class and I just really really enjoyed it in it we follow Medea who is a mythological character who essentially is betrayed by her husband so she takes revenge on him in very very dramatic fashion that is not very good but the her speeches her character is so fascinating to me many psychologists have stated that they believe she would be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder if she was real which is really interesting and i just 
she's just very interesting and the discussion of the status of men and women during the greek period is very interesting to have this character that's female that is doing these horrific things and is very very irrational in a lot of ways and very driven by passion which is kind of what they saw women as being also being in some ways portrayed as being favorite of the gods is very very interesting to read about and also yeah like i said her speeches are very her like soliloquies are very very interesting and i really really love this play so much if you are interested in classic literature this is definitely one that is a good choice to pick up in my opinion i I just adore it and it's my number nine on my list. Moving on to number eight, we have a book I've read just this last year and that is The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I love this book so much. In it we follow Newland Archer who is about to marry this beautiful young girl in New York City. His life is going great as far as he can tell but he ends up meeting the cousin of his fiance, Ellen Olenska, who has been living in Europe, so she's experienced different cultures, and that makes her very unique. She ends up developing characteristics that aren't common and aren't well accepted in New York City at this time, and things go on from there. It's very soap opery, I would say, in a lot of ways, but it has a lot of depth to it. Like, it discusses a lot of things about culture and about judgment of other people, and about marriage and what happiness is and how you can find happiness and how happiness isn't necessarily something that's gifted to you but it's something you create for yourself and it's a very very beautiful poignant novel that i think is very applicable to basically any time period just to consider these different issues and I love Edith Wharton's writing style. I have yet to read anything else by her. I really want to. I have a few on my shelf right now that I'd like to get to soon but this one in particular I just loved and I'm so glad I finally got around to it after years and years of owning this book. Finally got around to it and I absolutely love it. So the next book I have, I actually have multiple books by this author on this list. I was trying to avoid doing that but I wanted to be genuine about my top favorite books. And so there's a couple authors who appear multiple times on this list but it's fine. Again, I want to be authentic with what's my actual favorites because sometimes it bothers me when I watch other people's videos and they're doing like favorites of all time or whatever and they're like well I didn't want to have multiple books by the same author on this list so I didn't do that but then I'm like but then that's not actually your favorite books of all time so my seventh favorite classic book of all time is Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy this is a story following Bathsheba Everdeen who is an orphan. She's been raised in a variety of different homes. Right now she's with her aunt and she's been well educated. So even though she doesn't have a great fortune or is not an heir to anything necessarily, she does have an education. She ends up in a position where she inherits her uncle's farm. But in the meantime, there are three men who are vying for her attention. We have Sergeant Troy, who is a very attractive and flirtatious sergeant in the army. We have Mr. Boldwood, who is an older, humble man who owns a neighboring farm. And we have Gabriel Oak, who is a humble shepherd who actually in the beginning of the book proposed to her, but she turned him down before her fortunes rose and now she is of a much higher social status than he is, but he still has feelings for her and things go on from there. It is a wonderful, wonderful book. And a lot of people might've been turned off by the fact that I mentioned that this is kind of a love triangle, but Thomas Hardy is the king of love triangles. I love all of his love. I mean, this is kind of like a love square situation. I don't know what you would call that with three men, but he has a lot of that in his books, but he does it so well because in this time in the Victorian era, there's a lot more to marriage than just I love you I want to be with you there's things that need to be considered such as social status and wealth and all those different things that also go into marriage at this time and so it's easier for him to play with that in a way that you really don't know who they're gonna end up with because there's reasons for her to end up with all of them and in all of his books they don't always necessarily end up with the one they're most in love with if that makes sense I'm not saying 
that happens in this. I'm not gonna tell you what happens in this, but he plays with that a lot. He, they sometimes end up with someone who's just going to give them better social status. This particular book though is just such a good one. I love Bathsheba. I mean, she's very flawed, but that's the point is she grows as she experiences these different things that occur in this book. She grows as a person. Gabriel Oak is my book boyfriend, the best book boyfriend of all time. He and George Weasley are like my top two. I just love him so much. I love him more than Mr. Darcy. I just, I love Gabriel Oak. I'm not going to tell you whether he ends up with her or not, but I will just say I love him as a character. Yes, I love this book so much. And I also feel like this is a pretty good place to start with Thomas Hardy if you're interested. Also the movie adaptation from 2012 is like one of my favorite movies of all time. I just, I love this story so much and it's definitely got to be in my top 10. Next we have another Bronte novel because to be honest, I love the Bronte sisters from what I've read of them so far. And that book is The Tenet of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I read this last year and I love it so much. I love Helen Graham as a character. In this book, we follow a man to start off with named Gilbert Markham, who ends up meeting this widowed woman who moves into town with her son and he ends up developing feelings for her. She, they develop a good friendship. However, her past is very mysterious and a lot of gossip starts to go around about her and then in the middle por portion of the book we actually follow Helen Graham's story from her perspective as she wrote a journal and she explains her past and everything she's experienced um, and why she ended up in this small town in this house called w Wildfell Hall. And it is an incredible, incredible story that was definitely a bit ahead of its time. I love Anne Bronte's writing style. I think what I love most about her is she's just very raw. Like you read her books and you feel like you're really getting a look into her own personal experiences, her own personal thoughts and feelings. Not that like everything written in here is exactly who she is or anything like that, but you still get that sense of like, this is really meaningful to her personally, especially once you get to know a little bit more about her as a person. Um, and her actual life experiences. It's easy to see that this really, she really puts her heart into her stories and it's just beautiful and wonderful. Helen Graham is such a powerful, strong female character that I love reading about. Gilbert Markham was like the first Bronte hero that I actually figured was not too terrible. I'm still not super interested in him. He's not like a fictional crush completely, but I feel like I like him better than a lot of the other Bronte heroes I've read about. And it really addresses some critical issues about marital abuse and putting your children above everything else and making sacrifices for them and everything that goes into that being a woman at this time and having to support a child on your own and what goes into that and it was just it's just such a good book and definitely probably her best book technically however spoiler alert her other book is later on this list and is higher on in my estimation just because of the personal connection to me but technically this is probably a better book and one I highly recommend to anyone who's interested in Victorian literature. Okay, so now we get into top five and in the fifth place I have The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. I love this book so much. It's so much better than the play, not that the play is bad. The play is probably one of my favorite or musical is one of my favorite musicals ever that I've ever seen. So definitely not ragging on that, but I still love, love the book. I just love how enigmatic and mysterious and interesting the phantom is made out to be in this. We also get this book from the perspective of someone who lives far after the events of the phantom of the opera and all the drama that went into that with Christine and Raoul and basically it's from the perspective of a man, a journalist, who's trying to prove that the opera ghost was real. And it's such an interesting story that I just love. I think the ending of this is so much more intense and 
supernatural feeling than even the musical slash movie is, which just makes me love it all the more. And I don't necessarily love Raul as a character. I feel like he is a little bit unwilling to listen to Christine sometimes and be sympathetic towards her in a way that drives me crazy. So, you know, a little misogynist in that way, but at the same time, I feel like he does better listening to her in the book than he does in the musical. So anyway, that's a side tangent. I just, again, I just like the mystery behind this. It's just a fun read and one I feel like I'm going to come back to a lot. I just really enjoyed reading this. I feel like I don't have much else to say about it because it wasn't necessarily like it had a great message or anything like that. It was just a genuinely entertaining read with very dynamic and interesting characters. So it had a really good combination of things that just make a good book without necessarily having any moral discussion or anything like that. I guess a little bit of the idea of what makes a monster, is it really like what they look like or is it their actions and the phantom, like was he really as evil and scary as he was because he simply had never been loved and cared about and so he had only experienced negative emotions towards him so it has a lot of that but overall it's just an entertaining read and one i really recommend if you've never read the original story of the phantom of the opera please do especially if you like the musical because it's just so so good and this is like a collection of a bunch of different gothic tales so it's not actually this long it's like it's like somewhere around there it's like a couple hundred pages of this rather than the whole thing. So if you were seeing this from the side and you're like, oh my gosh, that's terrifying. It's really not that big. This is a collection of a bunch of stories. So anyway, but I still really, really love this book. Number four, however, is a very, very large book and that is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I love this book so much. I've said that about every single one, but it's so true. I mean, this is my top 10 favorite classics of all time. So obviously I really like them, but I, I had seen, I haven't ever seen the live musical performed, but I have watched the movie version starring Anne Hathaway and Hugh Jackman. And because I had that background going into this, I think it helped me a lot because there are a lot of characters in this book and there's a lot of side characters that are in it for two seconds but he victor hugo takes time to give a little bit of a backstory to every single character pretty much you meet and because of that it could get really boring i could see people being bored with it but because i already knew the story overall and because I already really loved it, it was a lot easier for me to appreciate all the additional details. I love Jean Valjean as a character. I guess if you don't know what this is about, I sh should probably tell you. This follows a man named Jean Valjean who goes to prison. Originally, he's supposed to be in there for five years for stealing a loaf of bread. However, he ends up staying in there for 20 years as he ends up attempting a few escapes and he ends up being punished for longer because of that. And when he gets out, originally he's very angry. He wants to make people pay for what he's suffered. However, there's this bishop who ends up showing him kindness and he ends up taking that and choosing to repay that kindness by being kind to others and being a generous person. And he is just an incredible role model for I think so many people who just can let their anger and lack of ability to forgive, to control them and make their life miserable or they can rise above it and try to be a better person. And I just love that about him. I love Fontaine and Eponine. I love their characters. I will say I don't necessarily love Cosette or Marius quite as much, unfortunately, but that's besides the point. I love Victor Hugo's writing. I love his ability to bring the story to life and really show how hard life is during this time for the poor in France and really bringing that to light. I know this had a lot of effect on political decisions made later on and things like that because people became more open to the social problems for the poor and it's just amazing. I will say, you know, there are portions, the section about the Battle of Waterloo, the section about the Paris sewer systems that are both very long and 
very unnecessary were a little bit of a slog for me to get through but overall I really liked this book despite that and I'm glad I ended up reading it in its entirety. I may in the future want to pick up an unabridged version but I will still definitely reread it at some point in my life because it's so so good. Also this edition it's Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. I absolutely love it so if you were curious that's what that is. And reaching into the top three, hopefully I can cut this video down a lot. I'm sure I will be able to. But my third favorite classic of all time is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. As I mentioned earlier, and as many of you likely guessed, yes, Agnes Grey has made an appearance. I am so glad I read this this year. This follows Agnes Grey, who ends up getting a job as a governess in order to help support her family and also just to get a little bit more independence for herself. And she tells her experience experiences as a governess with kids who are struggle buses and with parents who aren't much better and just explaining what it was like to be a governess at this time where you're you know you are part of the households but you're not the master but you're also not really a servant so you're kind of in this weird in-between state and it's very very difficult to deal with children when you're in that position because they're technically above you in authority. And so, yeah, very, very interesting. But I, the reason this worked so well for me, I've mentioned this in a lot of videos recently, so I won't go into too much intense detail or ranting about it, but I really connected with Agnes Grey as a character. Just her way of thinking is very similar to mine and even her flaws were very similar to some flaws I recognize in myself that I want to overcome. She also has some qualities that I want to develop better in myself, this generosity and awareness of others that I wish I had more abundantly in my life. The man she has a romantic storyline with is also the type of guy that I would want to marry at some point in the future, just a very sweet, caring person who's very quiet, not necessarily like needs to be center of, the, of attention, but just genuinely wants to help people around them in a completely unselfish way. And I, I just really, really liked the story. And I also found her experiences very fascinating as a governess and just that sense of self she has where she, you know, she has insecurities, but she has a lot of confidence as well. Like she knows that she has a lot of good qualities and she doesn't feel the need to constantly compare herself to other people, but she also does to some extent at some points when she's feeling a little low and it's just very real. Again, Anne Bronte has this way of being very raw in her stories and based on what little I know about her, I could see very much how she put herself and her own experiences into this book. And it's just beautiful and wonderful to read. All right, number two, we have Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I love this book so much. For a while, it was my favorite book of all time. However, there is something that beat it out within the past few years, but I love this book so much. It's definitely a tragedy. We follow a girl named Tess who comes from a very lower class family and her parents are both kind of drunks and a little naive. Her father ends up finding out that they are related to this knightly family that has since fallen away. They're no longer in power. However, he lets it go to his head. Things happen where Tess ends up getting sent to this family nearby with the last name D'Urberville, which is the family they're supposed to be related to, to ask for help or whatever. She ends up getting a job with them and the son, Alec, of this family ends up assaulting her. And so so we follow her experiences with society as she's experienced this horrible thing that was not her fault at all but that she is having to pay for in many many ways it's the saddest book i've probably ever read ever and it's just heartbreaking and a lot of people don't like it for that reason it's not necessarily one of their favorite hardies because of that reason but for me it just worked very well i i just love it so much it's such a well-written book many people who even say it's not their favorite hardy still admit that it's probably his best written work it's just it's so good it's so good i would not say start this i mean i started here with hardy and it worked for me so it might work for you but if you know yourself and you know you're not as drawn to sad really sad stories maybe don't pick this up first as a hardy to read. Again, Far From the Madding Crowd is definitely a better place to start, but I still really, really 
really love this book so much and I don't think it's going to fall out of my top 10 let alone probably top five for a very long time. It would take a lot for this to fall because it's just so good. And my number one favorite classic of all time and really favorite book of all time is Little Women by Louise May Alcott. I love this book so much. I can't even say I love it. That just doesn't feel like it's enough a big enough word to describe my feelings towards this book. Let's start by giving you a quick synopsis if you haven't heard anything about this for whatever reason in your life. This book follows essentially the March sisters, four sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, who are all very different but also have a lot of similarities and we follow them essentially through their life from the time they're teenage age up to their early adulthood as they get married and what it's like for them to grow up and how they're able to learn and grow. And it's very, very character driven. It's a very character driven story. The reason I love this book so much is honestly, like I mentioned with Agnes Grey, I really see myself in that book. And for Little Women, I see my past in this book. I see my present where I currently am just as a person and just in my life. And I also see where I want to be in the future and many characteristics that I want to develop in myself in the future. And so this like encompasses myself so much. I see a little bit of myself in each one of the sisters and I admire each of them for different reasons. I love that they're not perfect characters. They all have flaws. None of them are portrayed as an ideal person. They're all just, they all have their different strengths and weaknesses and it all comes together to make them just a dream family. And I love Meg and her desire to be proper and correct and to do what she needs she needs to do, but also having that very romantic side of her. I love Jo and her ambition and her willingness to stand up for what's right and say what she wants to say and desire to be learned and to be more well read. And I love Beth and her sweet, gentle nature and her ability to be such an angel in this family, such a much needed quiet influence in this family. And I love Amy and her ambition and her also recognizing her responsibility for those around her in a way that Jo maybe doesn't quite as much. And I love the different relationships, the romantic relationships in this that show really good examples of what a romantic relationship, what a married relationship should be like. I just, I love it so much. I love Little Women. I will forever love this book. I do not believe that any book will ever trump Little Women as my favorite book of all time. It's possible, it's very possible, but I feel like it would take an incredible book to do that because like I said this really encompasses my whole self my past present and future I see in this book and I just love it anyway that is it thank you so much for watching let me know down below some of your favorite classics also what your thoughts are on some of these books as I would love to know and I will see you next time bye